Welcome back to my channel where we delve into the intriguing world of failures, demystifying their often intimidating and bewildering nature. Titan has never been... Today I explain the chilling story of the Titan sub and its ill-fated expedition to the Titanic, which has gripped the world's attention like few news stories do. My specially made animations will illustrate what happened. Diving to the wreck of the Titanic is extremely treacherous. It can only be attempted during small weather windows in the year because the conditions need to be perfect. On Sunday, June 18th, at 8am, the sub was launched beginning its descent into the deep. The journey to the sea floor took approximately two hours, moving at the slow pace of just two kilometers an hour. The sub descended under its own weight, preserving its propulsion batteries for maneuvering and course correction. The Titanic wreck lies at a staggering depth of four kilometers, comparable to the height of four table mountains in Cape Town. Large submarines don't venture beyond depths of 250 meters or 800 feet because the immense pressure becomes too dangerous at what is literally called crush depth. They did not descend directly over the wreck to avoid dropping weights or other stuff onto it. Instead, they were a little off to the side. Upon reaching the sea floor, the submersible would drop ballast to achieve neutral buoyancy and would then embark on its mission to locate the wreck. In the pitch darkness of the deep ocean, it took the crew approximately half an hour or more to find it using its powerful lights. There is no GPS underwater. They rely on accurate acoustic system and inertial navigation. Titanic could be very close and still take ages to find. The wreck was approached front on so the visitors would have this iconic view as their first glimpse of the historic ship. 90 minutes into the dive and about three quarters of the way down, the mother ship received the last message from Titan. Some reports said the sub's final text told they had dropped their weights, implying the need to ascend urgently to deal with an emergency. That would be the last communication received. Did they abort the dive because of a system warning? Or were they hearing ominous noises from the hull? This is a truly terrifying thought. The voyage data recorder should reveal more. Communication was completely lost as the short text message system and positioning pings ceased simultaneously. What followed was an implosion of the passenger compartment, collapsing into a small space in the blink of an eye. The violent collapse was effectively instant, as this demonstration shows. The pressure vessel consisted of the mid-body pipe, end rings and the hemispheres. The center tube was made of 5 inch thick carbon fiber and epoxy composite rolled onto a steel pipe. The hemispheres and rings were made of titanium. The rings are glued onto the ends of the carbon fiber. The hemispheres are bolted onto the rings. The front dome is pivoted as the door so you can get in and out. When closed, it is bolted shut from the outside. A tube is a weaker structural shape than a sphere, so the tube should have been the stronger material, not the unproven one. This choice of material had been questioned by the deep submergence community, but the OceanGate CEO dismissed these warnings as getting in the way of innovation. The titanium parts were covered intact. Perhaps the acrylic porthole failed, but it seems more likely the mid-body pressure tube of the crew compartment was crushed by the unimaginable pressure. With each dive, the pressure vessel of the sub experienced incremental fatigue with tiny cracks and weaknesses. On dive 24, the accumulated damage was too much and tragically the five occupants died instantly. The composite would have been shattered into fragments. The composite material may have failed in the direction where the fibers were not providing support to the epoxy. The 
The filaments were rolled in one direction only, not with multi-orientations as is the norm for stability. I would be interested to hear comments from those who know more. Even if the carbon fiber turns out not to be the cause, its use was part of a disturbing attitude of dismissing industry best practices and norms. The sub's pieces sank and settled on the seafloor. After searching more widely for a few days, the search teams looked in the location below the last known position. Very soon, they located five major fragments, including both end domes and the landing frame, scattered across two debris fields. The day after the sub disappeared, there was persuasive evidence that pointed to a sudden disaster. The Navy had picked up a violent underwater bang shortly after the simultaneous loss of all communication. It is puzzling why this compelling evidence was not made known while alternate incorrect scenarios swirled unnecessarily for four days and the search focused on the wrong place. Ten days after the sub disappeared, the wreckage was brought to shore in Canada. These pieces will be essential for the investigation that will now start. Our incredible modern world runs smoothly without us even noticing. We get to enjoy all these amazing benefits without giving them a second thought. It's only when things go wrong that we start to realize how much we take it all for granted. None of the seamless operation would be possible without the unsung heroes, our army of brilliant scientists and engineers, quietly and unseen, making sure everything functions effortlessly. Our reliance on them is undeniable. The ocean does not care if you are rich, but it does favor those who respect engineering and science ahead of hubris and gut feel innovation. If you like this, check out my video on the deeply puzzling Yeti Airlines crash. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.